I was asked a question earlier on, and it's probably still there on, on a YouTube video, and it's a really, really good question. And it's a good question because so many people carry this thought and, and probably also ask themselves or struggle with the answer to the same question. And the question is, my dog knows that it shouldn't be doing something, but my dog does it anyway. How do I deal with that? How do you deal with a dog that's doing something that it knows it shouldn't be doing? <laughs> She's got itchy ears. Good girl. Yeah, how do you deal with something where the dog is doing something that it knows it shouldn't be doing? Right. When we um, decide, when we interpret a dog's behaviour as being something that they know they shouldn't do, but they're doing it anyway, that sort of like opens the door to us thinking that dogs have got this spite or this sort of like, um, uh, you know, revenge mentality or this... Um, sort of um, secrecy if you like this ability to sort of like wait until the coast is clear and then do it because I know such and such in the same way that we would right in the same way that we would do something and it just doesn't work like that okay so if a dog is doing something um, and they're doing it let's uh, let's say I don't know let's say a dog's stealing food off the side right there's a simple one so a dog's stealing food off the side they don't do it when I'm there so they know they shouldn't do it, but when I'm not there, the dog's stealing food off the side. Right, now this could be anything. This could be peeing in the house, it could be digging in the garden, it could be jumping up at people, it could be anything, right? But the, the fact remains is that we say, they know they shouldn't be doing it, um, but they're doing it when they think they can get away with it, or when they, they think they can pull the wool over my eyes. Here's the, here's the thing, if a dog is doing something um, when you're not there, but not doing something when you are there, you, are basically the signal that says to the dog unsafe or you are the signal that says to the dog not worthwhile because that person's here and that's generally when you have been the one that has interrupted corrected you know punished the behavior or the dog for doing a particular thing all right so it might be that I've walked into the kitchen I've seen the dog stealing food off the side and I've gone, oh, yeah, da, 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 like that or, oh, yeah, and give the dog a smack on the backside or something whatever it might be that I've done that, and so when I'm standing there cooking, or I'm standing there talking in the kitchen, there's food on the side, the dog won't take the food off. When I remove myself from the kitchen, and either there's somebody else in there, or there's nobody in there, and there's food in there, the dog steals it. Now, if I start to interpret that as being, oh, trying to get one over on me, and no, you shouldn't do that, but the dog doesn't know that he or she shouldn't do that. The dog, all the dog understands is that it isn't a worthwhile thing to do when you're present. They haven't got the capacity to think, secretly sort of think, right, that person's not present now, so here's my chance. They just look at the picture presented before them. They look at the context pre presented before them. Something's missing. The thing that's missing is the warning signal. The thing that's missing is the thing that predict predicts a negative consequence if I were to jump up on that side. That's missing, I'll take the stuff off the side. It isn't a fact that I'm, or I'll do whatever it is, you know, I'll dig the garden, I'll jump up, I'll trash something, whatever it happens to be. It isn't that I'm trying to get one over on you, it isn't that I know that I shouldn't do it, it's that I don't understand that it isn't worth me doing it, whether you're there or not. Or that I don't understand that I shouldn't do it across the board. And generally, that that is almost almost always the primary reason is that the dog doesn't understand what we think they understand okay they have formed a different picture to the one that we now believe that they have formed so it is either that part of that picture is missing and that part is the thing that is generally the corrective element that would tell the dog no which would be us or as the person if we've done it verbally or physically or the other reason why a dog is doing things that, they, that we say that they shouldn't do is because the incentive to do so is greater than the incentive not to. It really is that simple. As a dog, I really do look at things that simply. At this moment in time, in this specific context, what best serves me? What have I learned in the past from doing this particular thing in this particular location under these particular circumstances? If it's that when I do this, mum or dad could boom, comes down on me like a ton of, I won't do it. I won't do it if it's been sufficient when you're there. If it's been that um, I'm at distance from you, I do this, nothing's happened. You know what I mean? 30 seconds later, someone's caught up with me and give me a right bollocking because they think I know what should have happened, but I don't. 
All I'm then going to do is give you some appeasement behaviours when you approach me, and you sort of like in turn interpret that incorrectly as the dog's guilt, as the dog's true understanding of what they ought to be doing. And it's a really, really common thing amongst dog owners to um, give their dogs, empower their dogs with the ability to feel um, revenge or guilt or spite or, do you know what I mean? A calculating mind that's sort of like, you know, the way that only humans are like that, human beings are like that, you know? We're, we're sort of like um, sinister enough to sort of like plot things. Dogs don't do that. They simply look at it and think, what has happened here before? What is likely to happen here again? Do you know what I mean? It really is. So try to avoid falling into the, um, they know that they shouldn't be doing it, but they're still doing it. So, you know, so then we get into this sort of like idea that there's a bit of a, a war of minds going on between us because there isn't. If a dog is doing something and I don't want them to do it, I need to make it basically not worth the dog's while to do that. And the problem with doing that physically or doing that yourself is that you become paramount in that picture, which is where remote, uh, training aids come in instead or booby traps or whatever else you know because you can be removed from that picture so the picture holds regardless of whether or not you're there but if you're the sort of person who would um, catch a dog doing something tell your dog off for it or uh, try and interrupt them or whatever bear in mind that you are forming a picture in your dog's mind that basically includes your presence and when you are not there you are likely to see a return of the same behaviour that you thought your dog understood, understood that it shouldn't do. Okay, hopefully that's some benefit. Any comments, drop, drop them down. Cheers.